welcome to M Talk News, bringing you information of the Christian world. I'm your national news anchor, Dustin Pfeiffer. Our first story tonight Liberty University out of Lynchburg, Virginia has filed a $10 million lawsuit against the school's former president, Jerry Falwell Jr. See, Jerry Falwell Jr. and his wife Becky were involved in an extramarital affair with Giancarlo Granda and was silent about the uh, subsequent allegations that Granda was trying to extort money from the Falwells. Instead of divulging Liberty to Liberty's Board of Trustees, Granda's active attempts at extortion, Falwell Jr. instead led a scheme to cover up the illicit conduct, the Liberty lawsuit states. Falwell worked diligently to coup Granda into total confidentiality about most perilous details of the young man's relationship with the Falwells and to suppress the damaging uh, Granda allegations. And included in this, Falwell, Jerry Falwell Jr., in the midst of his um, employment negotiations with the Liberty University's executive committee, he decided to withhold the information from the, from the uh, negotiations, which the executive committee has stated that it would have definitely made a big change. In fact, they would never have had the employment negotiations in the first place in 2019. And have also, again, restated that his, his actions have caused great damage to Liberty University's enrollment and donor base. Now, on to our second story. Lecrae is involved with Prison Fellowship Ministries. Uh, Prison Fellowship is helping you know, convicts, as you know, preaching to convicts inside prisons, as well as helping them outside of prison. You see, there's 44,000 documented social stigmas and legal restrictions on former prisoners from gaining education to work. And so, Lecrae, involved with prison fellowship, is trying to help mitigate that and even turn things around to help these prisoners who have, who they've stated have served their time to bring them back into the fold of society and that they are able to reacclimate to society without having that stigma to follow them being restricted from doing things and so Ukraine is continuing to do this as of now and finally ASL in a partnership with several deaf organizations as well as Bible translation organizations have come together to develop an American, an American Sign Language version of the Bible, which is going to help translate the Bible into American Sign Language so that people who are hard of hearing or who are deaf can experience the Bible in, similar, in the same way as people who can, you know, who can read English, but as well as not just to gain you know, what's on the paper, but also help to understand the emotions behind what was going on, how these things would have sounded um, and help them to understand how these things would have sounded if they, um, if they could hear. We do thank you for sticking with us and continue to stay with us as we go over to John with our international news report. All right. Well, thank you, Dustin, for those reports. We'll be sure to follow those up. And now we are heading into your international reports for the week. So our first one comes from Eritrea. So last month, 35 Christians were arrested in the capital and... So it was 23, or, or sorry, sorry, I messed up. Let me start again. 35 Christians were arrested last month in Eritrea. 23 were arrested during a prayer meeting held in the capital, and 12 others were arrested in another area. As of Sunday, all but one of the 23 was released. It is unknown why one man was denied his freedom. This has dampened the hope that many have had that Eritrea was finally lessening their persecution of Christians. If you've been following us for a while, you know that we've reported on Eritrea. We've reported their treatment of Christians. They are listed as number six on the most persecuted countries for Christians of 2021. And many had hoped that they were lessening their persecution. They'd been releasing prisoners uh, recently, but many also did point out that we couldn't ignore the continued human rights violations. And so this kind of just brings people back to where things were. So we do ask that you please continue to pray for the story. All right, the next one, and this is probably the hardest one we'll do today, is from North Korea. So a group of human rights um, groups, wow, a group of human rights groups, 
have banded together to urge not only America, but the, but the international world at large to take a more solid stance against North Korea's human rights violations. Too often, human rights are a tertiary issue, they state. This calls for South Korea, for instance, to get involved after reports have indicated that South Korea was bending to pressure of North, from North Korea. North Korea is listed as the number one on the list I previous men uh, previously mentioned for the worst places for Christians to live in 2021. And it's not very hard to see why. Christians may be beaten, imprisoned, tortured, enslaved, or even executed for simply praying, reading scripture, or talking about their faith. Children are encouraged to spy on their parents and report anything. And for expecting mothers, the treatment is much worse. And this is where it gets really hard. So bear with me. I'm going to try and get through this. They may be enforced to endure hard labor alone, or they may have their children murdered by the state while still in the womb. So forced abortions. Some reports have indicated that mothers are forced to watch the guards killing their babies. So we are hoping that this human right that the human rights groups can finally get the international world to realize the numerous violations North Korea has committed, and we're hoping that this will finally bring about some change in the world. So we're going back to Myanmar now, where the leaders of Kachin Baptist Convention, case KBC, have called for prayer and advocacy for the violation or for the situation in Myanmar. If you'll recall two months ago, a military coup toppled the government. Since then, the military has ruled, often persecuting those who disagree. The call is led by Reverend Dr. Hakalam Samson and Reverend Yong Ta Tume. Sorry, I'm so sorry. If you're watching this, I'm so sorry I mispronounced your names. They have called for Christians to pray for an end to the military rule of the country. KBC has reported that has reported the numerous inhuman treatment which the civilians are forced to endure. They are constantly in fear of arrest and torture. They are denied property even if they are entitled to own it. And they are even denied information through information blackouts. Also, any church that does not speak in favor of the Tatmadaw, which is the military group that staged the coup, they will be punished. So we're asking, I'm, I'm joining our brothers here in saying that we need to pray for Myanmar. We need to advocate for a return of the duly elected government in this country. And we need to pray that the persecution of the Tatmadaw will end. And for our last story for this week, we are going to Scotland. So, where there is a lawsuit in uh, in the works. So the Billy Graham Evangelical Associ Evangelistic Association and Sterling Free Church have filed to sue the Robertson Trust, one of Scotland's largest charities, claiming discrimination because of religious beliefs. The Robertson Trust decided to cancel a contract for use of its Barracks, Center Con Barracks Conference Center for a Sunday worship service and training session. The churches had planned an event at the Barracks Conference Center to train churches for an outreach program called the, the Graham Tour UK before the trust canceled the agreement. The case is being led by the Christian Institute and is scheduled to be heard next week. The churches have claimed that they made it clear from the beginning what they plan to do with the center. The trust says they were unaware and moved to cancel after finding out, claiming they don't rent out for political or religious purposes. Sterling Church claims they are being discriminated against because of their belief that marriage is a union between one man and one woman. According to the church, the contract they made with the trust expressly states that they will be using the center for the purposes of worship. The trust says that this is in violation of their agreement. However... As many of, as they have pointed out, you know, this is, they say they signed that agreement stating that they were going to use it. And the case will be heard this week. So I say we leave it to the professionals and let them figure it all out. But I do say that we pray for our brothers and sisters if they are being persecuted. As we should pray for all these cases that I've brought to you. 
Please continue to pray for them. Pray for our brothers and sisters across the world who are suffering, whether it's through discrimination because of their beliefs or whether it's outright attack. Please continue to pray for them and stand up for what is right. All right, thank you. And we will now go to your top news stories for the week. All right, thank you guys for sticking with us. Welcome to our top news segment. And first up, I want John to introduce our first segment for today for top news. Well, as you guys have been knowing, I've been covering Pastor James Coates in Canada. And we have an update for you on that. So they have had to relocate where they have church. And this is because, well, Dustin, do you want to explain or you want me to finish? Go ahead. So the Canadian, the Albertan government put a, was it chain link? Yeah, chain link fence. Yeah, they put up a chain link fence to keep Pastor Coates and his congregation out of Grace Life Chapel or Grace Life Church. So Pastor Coates and his congregants just moved to a different church or a different undisclosed location. They have not disclosed where it is because they would like to keep last week's events from repeating themselves. And they not only recorded it, but put it up on YouTube and got over 60,000 views. So what do you think, Dustin? I mean, definitely smart idea. Well, if God blesses you with some good weather and your church is closed, or your church is being forcibly closed, then it's time for what we call an association night for an open air. <laughs> but yes, um, I do remember seeing where he says, you know, never did he think that he was going to be, you know, he told his congregation, never did you think that we were going to become a part of the persecuted church. Um, and this, yeah, uh, in, in my in my personal opinion, and honestly, I, I know others will, you know, believe in the same way. Um, but this is an act of persecution. I don't know what the Canadian law says, but you know, here in the United States, you're not going to really see that without you know direct opposition by multiple religious organizations standing together. Um, but this was a very ridiculous attempt by the Canadian government, and just just goes to prove. They're going to do what they need to do. They're going to preach the gospel. They're going to live in this persecuted era preaching the gospel. They will go to prison preaching the gospel. They will die preaching the gospel. They're going to go out and set out to do what their, what their Lord and Savior commanded them to do. Preach the gospel, live the gospel, and die for the gospel. Yeah, so I know you, uh, you said you didn't know what the answers was for Canada. Yes, this is still illegal by the Canadian Charter. Oh, wow. So the government is overstepping their bounds because religion is protected no, regardless of the circumstances. Look, you know, and yeah, so this is still overstepping their bounds. And we would like you guys to pray for Pastor James Coates, you know, and his congregation. We pray for their, for their meetings, for their gatherings, and just pray for the work that God has been doing. And speaking of work Hold that on. God has been doing. Just one more thing. Um, don't just pray for Pastor Coates, because I'm pretty sure this is not an isolated incident. I it's mean, we see, we've seen another incident where health, uh, a health official went into another church. And I don't think John saw this video yet, um, but I think he did. Anyways, where a health official and group of police officers went into a, a church to where the pastor told them to get out because they were going to be an interruption to the service. Um, so we know this is not this, you know, with Grace Life Church, this is not an isolated incident. Pray for churches around the world um, who are going to be facing this persecution, not just that they, you know, that they survive this persecution, but they preach the gospel during this persecution, that they stand as an act of defiance, not physical defiance, but um, a living defiance of uh, of the gospel being attacked. Speaking of which, John, you want to introduce something? Well, I was actually calling for you to introduce it because, <laughs> you know, we're talking about the gospel being preached and God being at work. And so this really goes into our next topic. Revival, revival. It's time for revival time. <laughs> and just like that, we lost all subscribers. Well, so this is actually something I love seeing, and I honestly, it brings a tear to my eye just to see how God is actually, you know, how God is still moving 
in the midst of all of our troubles and horrific situations, God is still moving. Nashville Area Church had, you know, start began in December up until um, for about four months, had a total of 1,000 baptisms and people coming to Christ long after the Sunday morning service has ended. You know, I, I can't, you know, I want to give a round of applause right now, but I don't want to do that near my mic. Um, I'm very happy to see something like this in the midst of a pandemic. This is the kind of stuff I want to see. People preaching the gospel and look what God can do. You do what God tells you to do. Guess what? This is your reward. What are your thoughts, John? I just like what the pastor says. You know, he talks about when he, you know, his church was really falling on hard times. They weren't dedicated anymore. Their meetings were bare and just bad. Yeah. And so he prayed for God to just move to, to revive them. Mm -hmm. And he points out, you know, if pastors all across the world would cry out to God for revival, God would not ignore that prayer. Amen. And I, I think, I think, uh, Personally, if you ask me, I think it's a trendsetter. I think we're going to see a lot more revivals going on. I think we will see this. I pray we see it. I, I really do. I pray that we see much more revivals. Many people have given their lives over to the living Lord Jesus Christ. And I just think that our brother has done a great thing in service of the Lord. Mm. It, this, this is always an amazing thing. And let's you know be in prayer you know if you go to a church pray for revival you know pray to god you know pray to god that we need a revival but not just that that hearts will be will come to come to know christ that they will become saved that they will be able to enjoy a life with christ and tell your pastors it's time to pray it's never been not a time to pray just tell them pray for revival in their church you can never have too many congregants you know COVID may say uh, your code regulation may say, oh, you can only have like 50 people, 20 people. But guess what? The kingdom of God is limitless. The kingdom of God is unlimited. You cannot put a limit on the amount of people who could be in the kingdom of God. Only God can do that. So pray and work as if God is going to answer that prayer. That's the other key point. Do what you continue to do. Serve. Continue to serve. And work hard as if God is going to answer that prayer. Because when he does, you got to be ready. But also an important thing, and the pastor points this out, know when to step aside also. Because he points this out, you know, sometimes we get so locked in to our formula, our, our schedule, essentially, for what we have for church. We don't leave room for God to do a miracle. We don't leave room for God to really do something, to bring revival. So and I like this. He tells him, you know, we still make a schedule, but we're not so rigid on it anymore. We, we let God do what God's going to do. Mm. And we just step out of the way and let him act. We hold to our schedule, but we don't rigidly hold to it. If God calls us to stop for revival, for prayer, for baptism, anything like that, we stop and we do it right away. And I, I just, I love that. I think a lot of Christian churches could learn from this. And you'll see the number of people grow, grow, and grow. The kingdom of God's numbers grow and grow and grow. And speaking of numbers, this will lead into our next segment, our media report. So stick with us. We're not done Thank yet. Thank you for sticking with us. I know I'm not Christopher. Unfortunately, Christopher was busy this weekend, so I will be doing the media report. So starting off at number 10, we have House of the Lord by Phil Wickham which was released April 2nd of 2021. At number nine, we have Less Like Me by Zach Williams, which was released October 4th of 2019. At number eight, we have You Say by Lauren Daigle, released July 13th, 2018. Number seven, we have Gyra, featuring Chandler Moore and Naomi Rain, um, that was developed by Elevation Worship and Ma Maverick City Music. Released on March 26, 2021. At number six, we have Bow to Belongs, again by Phil Wickham, released on September 4th, 2020. 
At number five, we have Help Is On The Way, Maybe Midnight by Toby Mac, released February 19th, 2021. Number four, we have Turn It Over by Zach Williams, released on April 16th, 2021. Number three, we have Good God Almighty by Crowder, released on January 15th, 2021. I do apologize, that's the radio version of Good God Almighty. At number two, we have Hold On To Me by Lauren Daigle, uh, released on February 26, 2021. And finally, at number one, we have Talking To Jesus, featuring Brandon Lake, um, with the Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music, released April 9th, 2021. Now we're going to go over to John with our Organization of the Week. All right, and now we will go to your Organization of the Week. So this week's organization is Kairos. And what Kairos is, is that it is a organization that focuses on prison ministry. So taking the love and forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ to the prisoners, showing them that there is a sal way of salvation, that they are loved, that they are cared for. And we personally, here at Many Tribes, One Kingdom, have a friend who has been involved in Kairos, and they actually suggested it to us this week. So we want to do a shout out to thank them. And so thank you, Ashley, for that. And then with that, that brings your report of MTOC News to a close for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Please join us again next week. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can join us every Saturday for more reports on the Christian world. Have a great day. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you. Thank you.